PanicAttackRecovery.com. Hi, I'm Lynette from PanicAttackRecovery.com. We're a collaboration of former sufferers helping people with panic attacks, anxiety, stress, and ADHD. Today, we want to share another technique that you can use when you're struggling with your thoughts and feel just plain stuck. The cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, technique we'd like to discuss is called a cost-benefit analysis. Let me explain this technique by way of example. Let's say that you work in a large office with many employees. Lately, your anxiety is so bad that the thought of going to work causes you extreme anxiety. You're scared about the prospect of having a panic attack at the office because you feel that everyone will think you're crazy. Because of these concerns, you've been missing a lot of work lately. Number one, the first step of the cost-benefit analysis is identifying the cognitive distortion or distortions. In this video, we'll identify the distortions. However, later you can obtain the list of distortions from our website or by doing an internet search for them. The following cognitive distortions are present in this example. Fortune telling and mind reading. Fortune telling is present because on some level you believe that you will have a panic attack at work. If you didn't, you wouldn't have the thought. So you are predicting the future. Mind reading is present because you believe that having a panic attack at work will result in your colleagues thinking you're crazy. You are reading their mind, in a sense, because you're saying to yourself, if I have a panic attack, then they'll think I'm crazy. Number two, the next step of the process is to isolate what belief is driving your behavior so that you can perform a cost-benefit analysis on it. Well, clearly the belief is, if I have a panic attack at work, then everyone will think I'm crazy. Therefore, I want to avoid going to work. Number three, Next, we need to actually perform the cost-benefit analysis on the belief, which is done by writing down the pros and cons of this belief. In other words, the advantages and disadvantages. From the example, some pros are, one, if I avoid going to work, then I don't have to worry about having a panic attack there. Two, if I avoid going to work, then I don't have to worry about what people will think of me. Some cons are, one, if I avoid going to work, then eventually I may lose my job and won't have a source of income. Two, I'll miss out on all the social interactions possible at work. Three, it restricts my freedom if I don't allow myself to go places. Four, it's a frustrating feeling that I'm unable to go to work because of this fear. It's obvious that there are far more disadvantages in maintaining such a belief. And number four, the last step of the process in light of the overwhelming evidence is coming up with healthier, more realistic thoughts. Here are some examples. While I might get nervous at work, the world will not come to an end. Most people are much more concerned about themselves than watching my every move. I could be incredibly nervous, and people are unlikely to even notice. I don't need to let this fear stop me from doing what's in my best interest, and clearly going to work is. Now, without suggesting that a cost-benefit an analysis is a technique applicable to all of your thoughts, but it is one more technique that can be quite helpful at times. There are many other CBT techniques that we discuss in our free newsletter, along with providing an overall approach to anxiety, panic attacks, and ADHD. Please visit our website where you can sign up for our free newsletter. PanicAttackRecovery.com